welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I want you to place your hand right now. Place your hand where you're trusting God for a miracle right now. I want you to lay your hands by faith. The power of God is strong in this place. Lay your hands by faith. Hmm. Hallelujah. And I'm, I'm going to ask Pastor Nat to blow that trumpet just one time and then... I will release the power of God, such an anointing in this place. I believe in the healing ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. It says, for he that cometh unto God must come believing, number one, that he exists, and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. So you must open up your heart to receive, expect a miracle. The Bible says the man at gate beautiful. When Peter said, look on us, he looked at them expecting to receive. You can expect to receive. Amen. And so as I lay my hands by faith, stretching it to your body, every part of your body, believe God for creative miracles. Believe God for supernatural manifestations. And here's what we're going to do. We'll make this very, very fast. As I release the power of God upon you, miracles are already happening. I'm going to ask those who would have experienced a healing miracle right now, just perhaps a few of you for tonight, we need to give witness to the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in this place. And so I'm going to ask such people to come right to my left or my right. There will be officials there to just receive you. And we'll have a few of those testimonies in due course. But how many of you believe God for a miracle? And I see photos. I see some of you standing in for your loved ones. And that includes the many who are connecting around the world. We're releasing the power of God. Now you lay your hands. Pastor Nat, please go ahead. At the sound of the trumpet, I want you to release your faith. Miracles are happening now. Hallelujah. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we have come with the power and the glory of God over America. I speak to every devil of infirmity. Every spirit that has plagued your body in the name that is above all names, I command those devils to leave now. In the name of Jesus, I command those devils to leave now. Every devil of infirmity, you leave now. 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 I decree and declare, be healed in the name of Jesus. My God, such power is flowing from this place. Be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. Deaf ears, complete deafness or partial deafness be opened now. Ears be opened now. 
There's a lady you came here with severe pain. I'm seeing severe pain around your back. Very severe pain. You couldn't bend. The power of God is touching you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's someone you're having problems breathing. You're not able to breathe. Um, it looks like asthma, but I, 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 you're, you're not able to breathe. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is resting upon you now. The supernatural power of God is resting upon you now. I'm seeing someone, it looks like a knee, a knee problem. It's like you have a problem with your knee. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. Touching you right now. Touching you right now. I'm seeing healing coming to a left shoulder. Left shoulder. The power of God is touching someone. You came here with pain. Left shoulder. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Migraine headaches. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There's someone you have. You have an incessant flu. You've tried to treat it again and again. And it keeps coming back. Flu. By the power of the Holy Spirit, your miracle comes now. Your miracle comes now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke autism. By the power of the Holy Spirit, life to your body, life to your body. Let that river of life flow through you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, there's someone having very severe heaviness around your chest. In the name of Jesus, you are healed now. You are healed now. You are healed now. You are healed now. I'm seeing someone, you're not able to move your fingers. I don't know what the problem is, but you're not able to move your fingers. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to ask those, everyone to check themselves. But the Lord is just ministering to me right now that the grace for prayer and intercession is going to rest on a few people right now. Listen, like you will be learning, it is impossible to birth a revival if you do not understand the art of prayer. Therefore, I stretch my hands now from the left to the right, the back to the front. Let that grace rest on you. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release that anointing upon you now. Prophetic intercessors arise by the power of the Holy Spirit. I release that anointing upon you, men and women. Deborahs, receive that impartation by the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I release that impartation upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, Matako Sapalando Skabredi Gebelege Baratu Siata. The grace to travail until revival comes. The grace to press. The grace to hold onto the horns of the altar till you break through in the spirit. I release that grace upon you. By this impartation, many ministries will arise. Many prophetic ministries will arise. We lose you. We lose you from slumber. We lose you from slumber. We lose you from slumber in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you are receiving. The Lord is ministering to me that there are four people here. A very mighty healing anointing. There, you, you are in a season in the spirit. You have seen this in your dreams and your visions. And you are about to step into a very mighty dimension of the healing anointing. Please help them. I stretch my hands wherever you are. Let that fire, healing fire from heaven, let it rest upon you now. Let it rest. 
Let it rest upon you now, men and women, an outpouring of that healing grace, an outpouring of that healing grace, an outpouring of that healing grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a lady, I'm seeing a miracle for a lady. The left, your left, the left side of your breast. I don't know what the issue is. Looks similar to the sister who gave her testimony here. But a miracle is happening to you right now. A miracle is happening to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A miracle is happening to you right now. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing an email and the title. Now, I'm not just, I'm not just speaking gibberish. I'm seeing that email. Congratulations. This is what I'm seeing. An email. This is what I'm seeing. Someone will come and give that testimony here. I'm seeing an email. I'm just allowed to see the you know the the title congratulations you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the Your mother, your mother is bedridden. I'm seeing this in a vision. Someone's mom bedridden. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching her right where she is. In the name that is above all names. The name that is above all names. Again, I'm seeing a lady just right here. You're not able to move because I think there's something that has to do with your bones or so. But the power of God is resting upon you right now, wherever you are. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is resting upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is resting upon you right now. The Lord is bringing you miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please listen. You'll be seated shortly, but I want you to listen. I want you, now I don't know how possible this is, but there is a gentleman and there is a lady. Both of them will shout loud under the anointing now. It is the influence of the spirit. It's going to be a loud shout. It is not an empty shout. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory resides in the tent of the righteous. In the name of Jesus, it is the shout that brings down Jericho. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, it's the shout that brings down Jericho. The shout that brings down Jericho. Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. In the name that is above all names. My God, miracles are happening here. Please don't be tired. You are receiving. You are receiving by the Spirit. You are receiving by the Spirit. Two more declarations and then you will be seated. Two more declarations and then you will be seated. Here's a prophetic word for someone. Remember ye not the former things. 
nor consider the things of old. This is what the Lord is saying as you speak to someone. It, it may have been trouble and turbulence from January, February, March, April, May, June, now July. But the Lord is telling me to tell you, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. I bring you into a new season. Behold, I do a new thing. I bring you into a new season. A new season. I hear in my spirit a new season. For a family, a new season. For an individual, a new season. For a ministry, a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I still hear it again in my spirit. It's a new season. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. It's a new season. A new season of psalmistry, receiving songs by the Spirit. A new season of the prophetic, speaking the purposes of God over the nation. A new season of the apostolic. A new season of the teaching grace. A new season in business. A new season in career. A new season in your family. Emata shabarako sabratis kalebarendos kobra haskiata. Shalaga de baretos kobra digada. Pray in the spirit for one minute if you can. This is part of the meeting. It's a prophetic meeting. Pray in the spirit. Go ahead. Shalaga branda gebereka tosko la branda gabos. Embrata kaparato kopreska leberento sevreski badash. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please listen. Here is another prophetic word for someone. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. If you will set aside the time to seek him, you will find the things you've been looking for. Listen, there are many things we try to look for that can only be found in his presence. And the Lord is bringing this prophetic word to someone that you're in a season where you need to avoid distraction away from the noise. Perhaps this is to a man of God Perhaps this is to a prophet in the making, an apostle in the making. And the Lord is saying you are busy. There are too many things around your life. Too many things. Legitimate things, but they are distractions. You need to set aside the time to seek his face, to know him. When you find him, you will find many other things in his presence. Do you receive that word? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to speak one more time over your life. I want you to check yourself immediately. I'm done speaking. If you need to make a call, there's such a strong anointing. For someone you're feeling just your right side from your feet down to your hand is the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving. Now, the moment I make that declaration, very quickly, let's take five or ten minutes out of my time. And I'm going to ask those who have been touched by the power of God to just make their way to an official here or there. There's somebody who will just give you room to just testify very quickly. Let's take a few testimonies celebrating the hand of God, a miracle, something has happened to you. I will speak one more time. We'll have that very quickly, and then I introduce my session by just giving us a background for this conference, and then we're done for tonight. Are you ready to receive? Now, in the name of Jesus, in addition to all who have been healed, whether I have mentioned your case prophetically or not, in the name that is above all names, every sickness, every infirmity here represented, I declare be healed from it now. Shout a believers, amen. Be healed now. From the crown of your head, my God, the power of God is moving upon someone. 
you will check that pain and not find it again you will check that pain and not find it again headaches be healed in the name of Jesus eye conditions be healed in the name of Jesus ear conditions be healed in the name of Jesus if you couldn't move any part of your body begin to move it now in the name of Jesus if you came with someone who is sick help them release your faith for a miracle right now if you couldn't walk in the name of Jesus begin to walk now you couldn't move begin to move now by the power of the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit there's someone you could not bend immediately after this prayer check yourself and try to bend by the power of the Holy Spirit hallelujah the Lord is showing me someone you've had some kind of um, abdominal problem I don't know what it is but it comes with excruciating pain right now the power of God is touching you in the name of Jesus Christ be healed in the name of Jesus 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 now we're going to celebrate Jesus in one minute and I want you to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened, I know there are people, the power of God has touched them. Please clear the way for them. If they are coming for their testimony, those online, there should be a link where you can send in your testimony. Let's take a few testimonies right now to glorify Jesus. Since Pastor Nat is still here with me, I'll just let him lead us in worship for one or two minutes very quickly. And then we'll have the people. So do well, check yourself. You need to confirm yourself. Please do so. Just come and stand here or here boldly. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. People are coming. Let's celebrate them. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Yes, sir. So just for a minute or two, and then you make your way to the front. Let's take a few testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. Check yourself and make your way to the front right now. Let's celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. Is this the best you can do? Celebrate them as they come.
Are you celebrating miracles already in this place? Look what Jesus is already doing. Look what Jesus is already doing. Hallelujah. To Jesus be all the glory. Let's take some of the testimonies. Praise the Lord. Apostle, we have powerful testimonies of healings here. So many testimonies of healings here. We have this uh, little girl. She Please be seated head. for a while. Be seated for. Yes, Apostle, go. she hit her head uh, two weeks ago. She came here with excruciating pain. Excruciating pain. Yes. I'll just let her testify herself. Go ahead very quickly. So... There was, um, I was at the pool with my sister and my brother, and I sat on, like, this machine or whatever, and I sat wrong, and my sister pushed me, and I hit my head really bad, and it's been hurting, and even before you started, like, um, like healing, um, it hurt when I touched it, but now when I touch it, it's gone. And now, no pain. No pain. Someone celebrating Jesus, the healing Jesus. Healed forever in the name of Jesus. Next person very quickly. Apostle, here is a testimony of healing. Back pain of over 10 years. Back Broken. pain. Over 10 years. Let yes. me hear her. Yes. I've been having back pain since I started having case. And then it's been really worrying me. But yes. I don't feel nothing right now. And I started having breast pain on this right um, last, uh, on Saturday. But now I don't feel nothing. Check yourself. Too. That's nothing. Bend down. Feel. Go ahead. Any pain. Any pain? Come on, are you giving Jesus praise, America? The mighty hand of God. God bless you. Next person, very quickly. Apostle, here also we have medically confirmed, even the previous ones, all testimonies are medically confirmed. Testimonies of healings in the breast. I'll just let her speak. Go ahead. Your praise. name and your testimony, yeah. My name is Beatrice Swana. Praise the Lord. I came here, I've been in a hospital several times, like many, like three years now. I've been having some strange movement in my, uh, my left breast. So when the, uh, the sister was testifying, I kind of feel like I'm burning all over from here. I feel burning, like burning, really burning. Yes. But when Apostle came up there and he said, somebody is receiving the same testimony. I felt like I was, I was completely going to knock out. And then I f right now, I can really feel, Check I don't yourself. feel anything. I don't feel anything again for No me. pain. No pain. No pain. Thank is you. someone celebrating Jesus? Mighty things by his spirit. Yes, go ahead testimony here of the sister that you spoke about who came in with asthma unable to breathe She's asthma able to breathe now i'll let her testify go ahead hi um my name is vanessa yesterday well a week ago i felt this attack asthma attack um i've been calling my doctor for him to prescribe something because it was so unusual my chest was so tight as the reviver progressed my voice went away. My chest got tighter. Yes. Yesterday, I forced myself to come. Yesterday, while we're in workers' meeting, when you took the stage, my, um, I took the inhaler to start to use it, but then my voice started to come out. And today, I really can talk, and the chest pain going away. I could not come even go 20 seconds without coughing. Now I can stand and talk, and I'm not even coughing. I can speak. Give Thank Jesus God. praise, Thank you, my Jesus. God. My God, my God, listen, I want you to see these miracles as a sign from Jesus that something new, something fast is coming over America, something prophetic. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. You spoke about someone with shoulder pain. Yes. He has had pain in his shoulder for seven years. Seven years. And while he was here in the meeting, after you spoke about it, he was able to start moving his hand. Go ahead. Yes, Apostle, I have had this pain on my shoulder for about um, seven to ten years before. Then it disappeared and it came back um, about one month ago. Yes. And has been so, so uh, painful. 
and it feel like there's something moving in my shoulder. And right now? And right now, it's Lift gone. it up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Any pain? Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Go ahead. She has had resistant flu for a long time and has not been able to... You're the lady with the flu. Yes, sir. How long has it been? I've been having it off and on since the, um, since the ending of last year. I've had okay. it like five times now. Yes. And I've taken all sorts of medications. They never work. And it didn't go. It didn't go. To just wear off and then come back. I was actually fly, fighting flu this week. I, had, I have a ball of tissue in my bag. Because I've been blowing my nose, and you prayed against insistent flu, and my nose was completely clear. I can breathe properly. What was impossible, you made possible, Jesus. Yeah. You have done it again. Amazing, amazing. Yes, let's hear her testimony very quickly. She has pain in her shoulder, her left shoulder. And her left shoulder. About that and it's gone. Please um, help those under the anointing. Yes. Um, my name is Eden. Um, about earlier this week, I had excruciating pain in my left shoulder, and my mom had to massage it. And I didn't know where the pain came from, but as soon as you mentioned my case, the pain left my body immediately. Completely. Yes. Never returns again in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Also, we have so many testimonies of pain healing supernaturally. But this case, we have a 19-year situation of bad eyesight. Bad Broken eyesight. Bad eyesight. Poor eyesight. We'll just okay. listen to her testify. Go ahead. Um, since middle school, um, my eyes were really poor. I couldn't see far away. And I would wear glasses to see the, the board in you class. You needed to use glasses. Yes. Um, yes. Even when driving and at night. Um, but you were ministering to people who had issues with eyesight, and then I could see clearer. I can read the Dickies Arena. It's clear now. Your face would have been blurry, but I can see the details. Come on now. Jesus, yeah. You have done it again. Jesus, yeah. In your special way. Listen, it means there are some things you could not see in your life. Some opportunities you could not see. By this miracle, God is saying, I am opening your eyes. I'm bringing you into certain realities. Who is receiving? Certain things you couldn't see. Someone shout, I receive. Shout it again, say, I receive. Hallelujah. My God, look what is happening here. Apostle, we have another testimony. Breast, pain in the breast healed supernaturally. Pain in the breast. Yes. How long? For the last two weeks, um, it has been throbbing so bad. Yes. And even when I touch it, it gets worse. But as soon as, soon as you declared, I've been pressing on it and I am healed. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Okay, next question. Apostle, healing in the knee. Pain in the knee heals supernaturally also. How long has it been? About two months. Two. Um, I fell in the garage. Um, my knee came in contact with concrete. And um, it's been hurting. And supernaturally today, it's healed. I can turn my knee sideways, which I could never Run. do. Run. Run. Go ahead. Look at this. Someone celebrate Jesus. No pain. Gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. He came in with chest pain this evening and supernaturally the pain is gone. The pain is gone. Yeah, so, uh, Apostle, whilst you were ministering, um, I felt um, in my spirit that I had received my healing. So I came to share my testimony. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus, place your hand there. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, perfection for you in the name of Jesus. Perfection for you in the name of Jesus. Is there someone with the name Susan or Susanna? Susanna. You are wearing a light jacket, like a sweater. Some, a sweater. Is there someone like that? What's your name? Please verify, make sure. Huh? Susan. Yes, Susan. You believe in the power of God, my dear? Yes. <laughs> You're surprised? I've been here since 10 a.m., so... How do I know you've been here? You see, you see how your faith, the power of God is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, you are stepping into a new season. There are so many things that have been happening around your life and you're asking God. I'm seeing you sit down and you're saying, God, where are you? I love you. I've served you, but I've not seen the reward. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. That the one who singled you out, Susan, that in the name of Jesus Christ, just to comfort you and to let you know that he's still God. I release that anointing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You believe in the power of God? Go ahead. Let's, let's have a few... Apostle, I'm just going to let the medical person speak okay. properly. Go ahead, please. Good evening. She reports that she had breast cancer that had metastasized and spread towards her bones, that she had difficulty walking, she had pain. Breast the, cancer. That had Me spread, sir. Medically verified? We don't have medical reports, but today what we are verifying that she couldn't do, that she can do now is pain on her... Right leg. Hey, how long has the cancer been? Five years. Run. Come on, America. The God of wonders. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. My dear, young lady, place your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus, I curse that devil right now. Be released forever in the name of Jesus Christ. You are perfected now, perfected forever in the name of Jesus. There are so many testimonies. Let's see how many we can take now. We'll still have room to, to take at other sessions, but um, can you imagine I've not even said anything? Good evening, America. Okay. Let's Apostle, Apostle, we have several healings of pain in the knee. So we just take our, our mother here, pain in the knee. I've had this pain for over three years. The doctor told me I was going to have surgery, but when Apostle was talking about knee pain... You were to have surgery? Yes, the power of God came upon Which me. of the knees now? Right knee. Okay. Very swollen. How long has it been? It's more than three years. Okay. Yes. Can you do whatever I'm doing? Any pain? Try running, ma'am. Let's celebrate Jesus. Never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we? Yes. We have, we have several testimonies of back pain being healed. She has had back pain for three years now. Three years. Yes, sir. Um, as soon as uh, you came in and you said there was a healing anointing. I tried to touch my back to pray. I don't have any pain. Check it again. No pain. No pain. In the name of Jesus, perfection for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Good evening, Apostle. I have been having a very sharp pain on my back for four months. I could not bend properly. But when you mentioned about my case, I tried to bend down. Go ahead, bend. Do what you couldn't do. Any pain. Let's celebrate Jesus. Any pain, he'll never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hold on, just, just a moment. I just saw a flash of light 
And the Lord is telling me that there's someone here, God is grooming you to be a great prophet. But there is, hold on, hold on, let me just prophesy. That anointing, as I'm speaking now, that anointing is going to rest upon you. The Lord is saying it's a new season. You may not believe it, but the anointing is coming upon you. You will begin to see, you will begin to hear a ministering by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be a new season. You step into that prophetic office by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, so here's what we'll do for sake of time. There are lots of testimonies. We'll just take two here. We'll take two here. Then um, we'll celebrate the rest. They can register their testimonies so that we can just... Um, let me introduce the session. And then um, else we'll spend the whole time on testimonies. Look what Jesus is already doing. Look what Jesus is already doing. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead. Apostle, we have several healings of pain in the knees. So we just line them up right now. Pain in the knee healed now. Various pains. Yes, sir. Madam, I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. This woman. I just saw light now resting on you. And the Lord is saying it's a new season. Receive that grace now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a new season for you. New season. It's a grace called favor. 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 There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is be. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. Okay, let's have one, one last one very quickly. I just want to testify and give the Lord Jesus glory and honor. You said my case, Apostle, for flu. Two days ago, I was having a problem with my throat itchiness, and last night I couldn't breathe. And then this morning when I woke up, I coughed up pure green, and I coughed up three times over here, and I felt the fire of God, and now my throat is not itching. Gone I've been healed. completely. Gone completely. It's like I'm brand new. In the name of Jesus, Thank healed you. forever. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's give Jesus Amen. a big hand clap. Okay. Apostle here, we have a creative testimony. She has had a mask behind her ear for seven years that has significantly reduced while she was in service today. A mask. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Take a deep breath and then go ahead with your testimony. Oh my God, she's overwhelmed. What happened? A mask. Was a, a growth at the back of her ear. Oh, a she's, large she's one. She's crying. What happened? It was a big and I prayed. I believe God for it. I, I saw that it's become small. So I asked my husband to look at it. And he confirmed that it's become really, really small. Look what Jesus is doing. I want you to lay your hands on your head. The power of God is coming on you. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's give Jesus praise. She was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis since the age of 17 and she's been stiff on her right side. You arthritis? Yes, sir. And you spoke about someone on the right side being healed. She can move now. Oh, the lady. Yes. That is you, arthritis. Yes. Since you were six. Since I was 17, I came to the United States when I was 15. Two years later, my fingers started to swell and my whole body started to be in pain. And then right now, you were talking about a lady with the right side. My ankles were stiff. I couldn't walk. And now I can move my leg. Run. Let the devil see what Jesus is doing in America. Come on. Look at this. Rheumatoid arthritis. My God, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of God. Hallelujah. My dear, lift your hands. The lady, 
I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare that that demonic situation will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, my apologies, we may need, is it all right if we just pause for a moment? The miracles, I know that there are so many and all of you are itching to testify, but this is just the first night. We give Jesus praise. We give Jesus praise and we bless him for all the miracles and I declare them blessed. Please go ahead. You can register your miracles with the media, the PR, and um, would, would, would give you an opportunity to share the next sessions. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Big hand clap. Amen. How many of you were blessed by the amazing ministry of Pastor William McDowell? Thank you. Such, such an incredible, incredible man of God. I love you and I'm deeply grateful. Thank you. And then my friend and brother, Pastor Nathaniel. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, just, just let me have your attention for the next 10, 15 minutes just to introduce my session. Um, Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 13 says, that the fire that burns upon the altar should not go off. And the Bible says that that fire must burn day and night. Day and night. I'll be doing a teaching series, the course of the sessions called Revival Flames. Revival Flames. And um, tonight is part one because of our time. I don't have the you know, the liberty to just stretch us through the background, but just so we're able to. Now, history is full of time periods where there was a sudden move of God and awakening and outpouring across cities, across communities, right from the Bible. In fact, you read about the moves of God in a place like Nineveh, you read about the move of God in Babylon. You read about the move of God even whilst Jesus was upon the earth. And then the early church in one day, they had a harvest of 3,000 people. And so, um, every once and again, you find spectacular moves of the Spirit where there's a heightened sense of spirituality a heightened sense of righteousness, a heightened sense of God consciousness. Um, in America here, we have your history is full of spectacular moves of God, the great awakenings, the, you know, Azusa Street Revival, and so on and so forth. Moments in history where God seemed to have moved in such a mighty way and um, our assignment here is to stand in faith with all who love Jesus and to rekindle the flames of revival over America. Hallelujah. I believe that this is a great nation. I believe that um, God has an agenda for this nation. And we've been sent by God by the mercy of God. To stand in faith with all who love Jesus and all who name the name of Jesus. To show you ancient paths. To show you scriptural principles for igniting and sustaining revivals. Hallelujah. I'm a student of revival myself by the grace of God. I've had the honor of being involved in awakenings and moves of God. And um, let me define for you for tonight what a revival is. I think that will be fair enough for tonight. Are you ready? So a revival is a reawakening to true spirituality. A revival is a reawakening to righteousness. A revival is a reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual dormancy. When we talk about revivals, we're talking about a season of reawakening where people suddenly come into a heightened state of God consciousness, where they come into a state of 
holiness and righteousness, loving Jesus like never before, serving his purposes like never before. Revivals are often characterized by a restoration of love for Jesus and then zeal for spiritual things. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14 says, Awake thou that sleepest, he says, and Christ shall give you light. Hallelujah. And then to let you know that revival is threefold in its operation. There's what we call personal revival. That has to do with an individual being revived. One who was once on fire. One who loved the Lord before. And for whatever reason, you went into a state of spiritual slumber. An individual can experience revival. Number two, the church the ecclesia can experience revival. This is the second level of revival. You find that in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 10, where we got the theme for this conference, the Bible says they were once dry bones and they arose and finally became an exceeding great army. So an individual can experience revival. God's people as a church, a corporate spiritual body, can experience revival. And then the third level is territorial revival. A nation, a city, a community can experience revival. An example is found in Jonah chapter 3. There's no time to read through the scripture, but the Bible tells us that a prophet was sent by God to a land called Nineveh. He was not sent to an individual. He was not sent to a family. He was sent to the entire nation. Jonah runs away from the command, ends up in the belly of the fish, repents, he's revived himself. Then he returns with the same mandate, chapter 3 and verse 1. Now he heads to Nineveh and he speaks to them and the king declares a fast from the king to all uh, those who are part of his cabinet down to the animals. And the Bible tells us that on account of of their repentance, genuine repentance, there was transformation. So there's personal revival, there's corporate revival as far as a spiritual family is concerned, and then finally there is territorial revival. If you're with me, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, haven't studied revival for a bit. Um, by the grace of God, I've read quite a number of books and spiritual resources um, as touching revivals. I have discovered that um, there are three areas we need to study as far as understanding revival is concerned. Number one, we need to study the birthing of revivals. How revivals are ignited because revival is likened to a flame and all flames and fires are ignited. Most people who talk about revivals do not take the time to study how that ignition happens. There are ancient principles, and I'll be sharing them with you in the course of this conference, how a genuine, sustainable, lasting revival is birthed. Number two, the second area of revivals that we need to study is how, why revivals die. It's important to not only study the ignition, but we must investigate why revivals die. Sometimes I'm amazed as I look at the current state of many cities and communities where there was once a mighty move of God. Some of those places have become um, centers of idolatry. Some of the buildings that used to be platforms for a mighty move of God. They become monuments today. Some of them reduced physically to ashes. There is a reason. There is an explanation as to why revivals die. The third area of consideration in learning the subject of revivals is we must learn the blessings or the fruits of revival. That every time a true revival happens to an individual, happens to a church, happens within a community and a nation like America, there are blessings and there are fruits. There are spiritual blessings to revival. 
there are economic blessings to revival. Are we together? There are technological blessings. Did you know that in the study of revival, you would notice that every time there was a major economic shift, a major technological shift, advancement, it coincided with prophetic moments of revival. There are blessings to revival. Are we learning now? Now, please write this down if you care or listen very carefully. I wrote here the tripartite features in my study of revival. Pastor Nat, I've learned that not every move of God can be called a revival. There are people who erroneously call just any outpouring a revival. And in my study, as I have studied, as I've experienced God in the capacity he's allowed me to experience him as touching the subject of revival, I have come up with what I call the tripartite feature of a true revival. That every time there is a genuine revival, there are three things to look out for. If you do not find these features, it is not a revival. Number one, the first feature that qualifies any move, any awakening to be called a revival is that there must be a restoration of God consciousness and true spirituality. There must be a restoration of God consciousness, a restoration of true spirituality. This happens through repentance. This happens through a restoration of holiness and righteousness a renewed love for Jesus and spiritual things. If you do not find this in any spiritual move, it is not a revival. Is someone learning? The first feature of a true revival is that there must be a restoration of God consciousness, a restoration of true spirituality, a restoration of characterized by repentance, holiness, righteousness, a renewed love for Jesus and spiritual things. When you find people loving Jesus, pressing for spiritual things, that is a real genuine revival. Number two, the second feature of a true revival is that there must be multiplication of believers multiplication of believers within that territory. Multiplication of believers. There must be an increase within the community of the believers as a result of massive salvation. It is impossible to have a genuine move of God, a genuine reawakening, a genuine revival. And then the number of those who are obedient to the faith is left unchanged. It's impossible. When the Holy Ghost fell in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. In one single day, the Bible says they had 3,000 people in one day. 3,000 people. That means if we do not have the believers in America, the number of genuine believers, spirit-filled believers, on the increase, multiplying, it means there is a desperate need for revival because something happens when the power of God rests upon a people. There is a massive conversion from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, resulting to many who become obedient to the faith. In fact, the Bible puts it this way in Acts chapter 2, when you read from verse 42 to verse 47, the Bible says, and the Lord added Daily, daily, not weekly, not monthly, not yearly. The Lord added daily as many as should be saved. And I'm praying over America in the name of Jesus that there would be such a harvest after this conference. Children, husbands, wives, professionals, that the Spirit of God will go around the length and the breadth of America, drawing many to Jesus. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. So the first feature of a genuine revival is restoration of true spirituality, restoration of God consciousness, restoration of your passion, your love for Jesus. Number two, multiplication 
within the community of believers. Number three, a true revival must also come with territorial transformation. Territorial transformation. This is the third feature. There has to be restoration within the community. A restoration of moral excellence. Are we together? A restoration of values. Then it translates to economic transformation, technological transformation. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, I'll quote for you. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name. Still remember the scripture? It says, they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, then will I hear from heaven. Listen, I will heal their sins, but it would not just stop with them. I will heal their land. Territorial transformation. Let me tell you this. When a people reject God, their territory will reject them. When a people reject God, something begins to happen around the territory that makes life difficult, makes life, um, makes life very uncomfortable for the people. It is true. Are we together? So restoration of your love and fire for Jesus, multiplication of believers, and then territorial transformation. Are you learning so far? We're discussing revivals now. Now, I just want to give you three keys and then we'll pray. And this will be the areas of consideration. Number one, we're going to consider the Great Commission. Many of you may not know, but genuine revival... If you, if you do not take anything, if, if this is the only thing you take from this session tonight, then it was worth your coming. Genuine revivals are connected to the Great Commission. Genuine revivals, revivals that last, revivals that speak are connected to the Great Commission. That means if you do not understand the Great Commission, that is the mandate Jesus left with the church, the mandate of world evangelization, the mandate of discipleship, and the mandate of territorial transformation. If you do not understand the Great Commission, you can never experience a genuine revival. I'll tell you, the reason why most territories and most individuals and sadly most churches do not experience awakenings, outpourings and revivals is because there has been a deviation. Are we together? A deviation from our understanding and our obedience to the Great Commission. Now, I know that there are several things we can teach about we should build believers holistically. But in order of spiritual priority, the Great Commission is the reason why we are called witnesses. That means no matter what else we teach about, no matter what other subjects we consider, if we neglect and ignore the Great Commission, there's no point receiving any empowerment. There's no point receiving any backing. The purpose for the backing, the purpose for the empowerment is to help us fulfill the Great Commission. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Bible says you shall be witnesses unto me, unto me, unto me. The purpose for the power is to help you become a witness. So revivals are directly connected to the Great Commission. Write this down, please. Revivals are directly connected to the Great Commission. I have studied the moves of God even within your nation. And I have found out that all who experienced genuine revival were all about the Great Commission. It is impossible to be involved in any other thing and experience genuine revival. The Spirit of God moves across a territory in honor, in honor to this global mandate of the harvest, discipleship, and territorial transformation. I know why our nation and many nations in the world are having a decline 
in spirituality, a decline in experiencing the power of God, is because for some reason Satan has deviated us. So we have placed emphasis on things that are outside of the Great Commission. For instance, you will seldom find the subject of souls, the harvest, the lost, being discussed in many Christian circles. It's been a campaign and a promotion of just personal comfort. And I'm not against that. There is a place for that, but it cannot replace the mandate. Are we together? If you come to my house for a visit, most likely I will refresh you. You would have something to eat and drink, but that is not your purpose of coming. If you now get distracted and we do not discuss why you came and your attention shifts to food, you've lost the purpose of coming. So prosperity and increase and breakthrough, they are wonderful, but those are supposed to be the benefits we enjoy while we serve. While we serve. While we serve. When we become distracted from the mandate and our attention now moves to prosperity, personal comfort, how to make it, and I'm not against these things. They are part of the components for the holistic buildup of the believer. But in order of spiritual priority, we need to be restored to the mandate, the great commission. The reason why there's no backing and there's powerlessness in the church in ever increasing dimension is because we have not justified the need for that power. Our justification is not prayer. Our justification is our commitment to fulfill the great commission. You can pray and pray and miss. You are prayerful but ineffective because the purpose is not tied to kingdom come. Just personal gratification. Is someone learning now? I can tell you the reason why we are not seeing the move of God like we saw in the 60s and the 70s. Most of those people we call evangelists or healing evangelists, they were selfless people who were all about the kingdom. They wanted to see the mandate People like John Knox will cry in prayer and say, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. It's not about my personal comfort. I desire to see your kingdom come. I desire to see your glory revealed. When it becomes about him and his program, when it becomes about him and the mandate to the nations, then we are ready to experience a move of God. This is a very important introduction. There are people who pray for revival. They fast over revival. They desire revival, awakenings in any dimension. But did you know they cannot articulate the Great Commission? They do not even know what it is. Why should you be anointed when you do not understand the Great Commission? Jesus said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? When I sent you, the message is what makes the man powerful. If you don't have the message, you should not be powerful. Listen, there needs to be a restoration of the great commission. It's a consciousness that every believer must have. The great commission is not a mandate for preachers. No. The great commission is not a mandate for prophets and apostles and teachers. The great commission is a mandate to, for all believers. So when the Holy Spirit walks in you, walks upon you, he releases you, transiting you from a believer to a witness. Then he sends you. It is at the point of being sent that you receive the empowerment and you can become an agent of revival. I can tell you this, I have studied in prayer, I have studied um, by reading books and by asking the Holy Spirit many questions. Why is it difficult to birth revivals across territories? The answer is what I'm giving you tonight. Our deviation from the Great Commission is the reason why we have not seen the move of God. Are we together? Show me a man, show me a church Show me a people who are desirous to see the lost come home. Show me a people who are passionately committed to the program of Jesus. 
beyond their personal comfort, beyond the mundane search for the things that occupy us, I show you a people who are ready for revival. Genuine revival. Are we learning now? Do I talk of the man Billy Graham? He was a man, as much as we have read, who demonstrated selflessness. His life was all about the desire to see Jesus revealed. In Koinonia, we say Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. America, there needs to be a restoration to the Great Commission. We need to begin to edit the things that we teach and advocate from our pulpits and return God's people to the core, the centrality of the mandate. Beyond our personal comfort, beyond getting good jobs, as important as that is, beyond receiving favor, as important as that is, beyond receiving breakthroughs, if the entire circumference of your Christian experience is about receiving things for your personal comfort, you will not be an effective believer. In fact, you will not be a witness. Now, the average believer is self-conscious. All we want to do is to acquire, gather together as proof that God is faithful. And while that is true, it's important that we burn it in our minds even tonight that there is a mandate that is bigger than us. There is a mandate that is bigger than getting a house. There is a mandate that is bigger than getting a job. There is a mandate that is bigger than our personal comfort. God is not against our comfort, but in order of spiritual priority, the great commission, the mandate to the nations to see his glory, his power, his word, his life invade our territories. When you become consumed, oh, that's the word. That's the word. I just got it. That's the word. Consumed. Beyond being passionate, the Bible says the zeal of the Lord when you become consumed with that passion to see the lost come home, then you can be trusted with the grace that brings authentic revival. Authentic revival. We desire the healing anointing outside of the Great Commission. We desire prosperity outside of the Great Commission. We desire all kinds of things that you know, occupy our minds and occupy our pursuit. America, the Lord has sent us to bring you a message. You want to see the power and the glory of God return to America like it was in the 60s, the 70s. I want you to know that the limitation is not from God's end. He's ever ready to breathe upon his people. He's ever ready to release that grace. There needs to be an adjustment. We need to return back understanding the Great Commission. We need to rebuild the altar of the Lord. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 30. When Elijah was going to call down fire, the first thing he did was to rebuild the altar of the Lord. To rebuild the altar. Let's set our priorities right as individuals, as a nation, when our spiritual priorities are right, then we are ready for a move of God. Preachers, we must rebuild the altar of the Lord. The mandate to the nations, the desire to see God's glory revealed, the desire to see the lost come home. Jesus gave us a prayer request before he left. He said, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers to his field. America is God's field. Did you hear what I said? America is God's field. Not just because the earth is the Lord's, but anywhere the harvest is, God calls it his field. Every city in America. That means God is still in the business of reaching out to many. 
That includes your loved ones. That includes your unsaved ones. It doesn't matter how long they've been away from Jesus Christ. And we've been sent with a mandate tonight by the Spirit of God and by the Spirit of grace. And introducing this session, I'm helping you understand that an awakening, a genuine revival, a genuine outpouring, a genuine awakening, not just the name of a conference, not just the title of a meeting, an experience, a lasting potent experience begins when we are restored to the Great Commission. Tonight, we are going to take the time to pray. And our prayer will first be for ourselves. I will make an altar call shortly, but I want us to pray. The prayer is that God will reorder our priorities and that we will rebuild the altar of the Lord in our own lives. There are many of us here who are gathered, listen to me, and so many others following. The truth about it is that we are not passionate about the things of God. We are just sympathetic to spiritual things. Are we together? We like the idea of church. We like the idea of conferences. We like the idea of Christian songs, good preaching, nice books. We are just sympathetic. But there is no definite commitment. There is no press. There's no zeal. There's no passion. There's no intention. There's no drive as far as spiritual things are concerned. No personal drive for prayer. No personal drive for the word. No personal drive for fellowship for the house of God. No personal drive for evangelism. Such an old word has been forgotten by so many people. There's a generation that does not even understand what that word means. Evangelism. Sounds old school. No wonder the miracles went with it. evangelism winning the lost helping them to find Jesus is someone learning tonight that God is counting on you and I to take his life to the nations to take his this gospel of salvation to the nations on account of our determination to fulfill that mandate we receive all kinds of empowerments, including the grace to birth genuine revivals. Now, you notice anyone, whether in the ministry of psalmistry, like we received from Pastor McDowell, from Pastor Nat, what do you find common? The passion for Jesus. Every time you see passion for Jesus, void of self, void of building an empire and just making a name, you also find with it the move of God. You know, Pastor McDowell, I'd listen to your song, Stay, and whilst you were singing it here, I was almost, I'm not a very emotional person. You've heard me say, I've tried to cry on many occasions, and <laughs> the tears don't just come, so I just gave up, and um, at least I cry in my heart. <laughs> Are we together? But whilst I was listening to Pastor McDowell just sing that song, I could see the purity, the sincerity, that this was not performance. It was a man revealing his secret place and bringing people into that experience. Hmm. Pastor Nat was seated right beside me, and he was almost in tears. I was almost going to reach out to him. I mean, he was so moved. I could see his worship. It was as though he was not coming up to minister. He was enjoying the worship and just soaking. And I said, this is it. This is the character, the template. This is how to set the table for a genuine revival. When it becomes performance, when it becomes the glorification of self, when it becomes distraction by and with mundane activities, I assure you there will be religiosity but not revival. There will be a lot of spiritual activities. We will replace our, our deficiency of his presence with so many things. It's the reason why the average believer is so busy but ineffective because we have brought in so many things as a remedy for the absence of his presence.
Hallelujah. And so we're going to pray. And this prayer tonight concerns everyone. And to the many who are following, we're going to cry out, leave America. Let's deal with ourselves. America is not the land. America is the people. When you take away people, it's no longer called America. Are we together now? So when you would be learning, I don't want to go ahead of myself, that among the many components that sponsor revival is the preparation of the vessel that will be used. In addition to this orientation, having the foundation of the Great Commission, the next in our order of discussion will be the vessel. The Bible talks about earthen vessels. It is important to understand the vessel who will be used by God to frontier revivals. But tonight we are going to cry. It is going to be a genuine and a desperate cry. The next five minutes or so, it will be a time of uncensored worship, crying our hearts in genuine repentance, in genuine brokenness. The Bible says, if my people, although they are my people and they are called by my name, it does not guarantee healing. They will need to humble themselves and then to pray, to seek my face, and then to turn from their wicked ways. The Bible says, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their lands. Can I tell you? Conferences like this do not need pointing fingers at people. If you still find someone who is wrong other than yourself, you're in error. Leave the government. We're coming there. Leave the wrongdoers. We're coming there. Tonight, you're going to be standing alone with Jesus. Crying out your heart. The distractions, the mundane pursuits. Some of you started loving Jesus, living for him. But many things stole his place in your heart. Many things may not be evil things. And right now, Jesus is not priority. You are sympathetic to the Jesus idea. But there's no genuine passion. That passion needs to be restored tonight. And that includes pastors. You would think because a man is involved in ministry, it doesn't mean he loves Jesus. Ministry can be a career. It can be a ritual. It's just that it's a ritual that is spiritual. Hmm. I've been captured by your love I can't explain. Now you have me, and now I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender, this life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong to you. Yes, I belong to you. Listen. My life changed when I got to a point where, you see, for me, Jesus is beyond a savior. I've come to a point where is my everything. Everything. And I mean it. This is not just a preacher's talk. I love him beyond preaching. I love him beyond ministry. What you see us do tonight is an overflow of that love. And I'm praying like a virus that that passion will infect someone tonight. A genuine hunger for Jesus. Hunger for Jesus. <laughs> that drives you to his presence. Hunger for Jesus. 
that becomes the sponsor for your loving and reaching the lost. Hunger. You know hunger is a gift from God? Every time people become sick, in most cases, the first thing they lose is appetite. Appetite. Hunger is proof of health. If you are not hungry, you are not healthy. Hunger is proof of health. I belong to you. Yes, I belong to you. Look at me. You think the spirits over America are that powerful? No. It is the powerlessness of the saints that has made the spirits causing mayhem. You believe me on that. Read the book of Daniel. You will see one man, one man who used his passion and fervency held the spirits that control the Medes and the Persians. A parliament had to come up with a policy because a man's spiritual life became a threat to darkness. One man.